Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. And Jesus called to him his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly, I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes." This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome the Reverend Neil Middlestadt. Grace to you in Christ our Lord. Jesus sent out the twelve and told them to proclaim, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is just what Jesus himself had been proclaiming. But what is the kingdom of heaven? And where is it? A kingdom is a place ruled by a king. For example, back in the time when France had kings, then what the king wanted done was done in France. If the king wanted a tower built, or if he wanted a festival to take place, then as long as it was within his kingdom, France, it would happen. So try this as a definition. A kingdom is where what the king wants done gets done. Then what would the kingdom of heaven, also called the kingdom of God, be? It's where what God wants done gets done. What does God want done? He wants to see the sick healed, death defeated, lepers cleansed and restored to their families, and people set free from demons, which is tied to the forgiveness of sins, because when God forgives sins, the devil no longer has a legal claim on a person. All these things are just what Jesus himself had been doing, and not in heaven, but on earth. What the king, God, wants done was actually getting done wherever Jesus was. Know why? Because <laughs> Christ is the king. He is God with power to rule and make his will happen on earth as it is in heaven. People were being healed, cleansed, and freed. And here in Matthew 10, 
the king commissions his disciples to also do his will, to bring the kingdom of God to people, to do the ministry they have watched him do, that he, in fact, has been training them to do. What, including the miraculous? Yes. Jesus gives the twelve authority to heal, etc. And in Acts, we find examples of God's miracles actually taking place through them. And Jesus told them, Proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand? That means it was so close that the hearers could reach out their hand then and there to grasp it. Faith is the hand that grasps the promises of God. They are not beyond our reach. Hearing God's promises, your faith may reach out and grasp them now. The kingdom of God is at hand. At the end of Matthew, chapter 28, Jesus similarly commissions the apostles again, and through them, the whole church. Which means, baptized into Christ, we also are called to do the king's will. Really? Are we also authorized for miracles? Well, the twelve apostles were uniquely authorized as the witnesses of Christ, especially his death and resurrection, and so it was appropriate that their testimony and teaching be accompanied in a special way by miraculous signs. Having said that, do you not pray for the sick at your church? We do at ours, and people are always helped. Often they get well, occasionally in quite amazing ways. And forgiveness of sins is proclaimed. Burdens are lifted and unclean spirits are driven away. Occasionally that also happens in an amazing way. And let me add this. The dead are raised. When? Every baptism. Christ rose from the dead on that Easter morning. And now, when baptized, we are placed securely into his resurrected life. This is something that those without faith in Christ do not have, but we do. We are not going to die. We are in Christ. After our last heartbeat, we will open our eyes and find ourselves in paradise. It is the will of the king, and that's not death. And when the king appears on earth again, triumphantly, on the last day, our bodies also which have slept peacefully in their graves, will rise, reunited with our living spirits. It will be a day that will never end, a kingdom that will never end. We are commissioned now to live and proclaim it. Amen.